Hello there, my name is Keo. I am the editor-in-chief at Daily Drink Magazine. We're going to try this format out where we talk a bit about the coffee uh, situation, what it's like to be served, and what it's like to serve. Um, you'll hear from me, you'll hear from uh, Buffy, our managing editor, and maybe some of our contributors. Uh, I had a very interesting week this week where uh, one of my uh, homes, our studio in Cobao Expo, uh, closed. It went by the name of Kendo Creative. Um, many people considered it a cafe, but it really wasn't a cafe. It's an art studio where we had a coffee bar. And the coffee bar, um, my perception was that it was an art as well. And we wanted to approach everything as an art. We tried to approach um, art as art. We tried to approach graffiti as art, uh, vandalism as art. We tried to approach conversation as art and of course coffee as an art. Um, but the conversation and the coffee really went hand in hand and that's something I really wanted to, to cover today and um, kind of what I learned being the head barista over at Kendo um, and what I experienced serving there. You know, when we first started out, there was, I was just using three pour over cones, three Kalita 102s and uh, and a kettle, a Kalita kettle that my wife had given me as a gift and a, an induction cooker, which meant that we had to boil all of our water, you know, one cup at a time. So I was actually weighing in my water every time that I boiled it. And uh, we also didn't have an electric grinder. So I was using a Porlex grinder in the beginning. And then when uh, at some point a stone inside my coffee cracked the Porlex burr, I had to switch out to a Lido 2 grinder, which is a little bit faster, but grinding all of those cups of coffee was still quite an ordeal and it took several minutes to do. Now, those of us who are used to serving coffee in a specialty coffee uh, fashion know that the origin story and the coffee story, the coffee journey from the farmer and the producer going to the roaster, you talk a bit about uh, what the roaster did and then what the barista is doing in preparation. These are all things that we're used to To conveying to saying when we're talking about the coffee itself When you are hand grinding all of that coffee and three people come in and want to know about that coffee It takes quite some time to make and I, I ended up having some cup of coffees that took 15 minutes to make Because you had to boil the water you had to grind the coffee and no matter how fast I got at this um it would still take much longer to do than to be able to than it took to tell the story of the coffee itself and what i learned from doing that is frankly listening so i would learn to ask the customers and our you know the people who would come in and order coffee you know they come in and i'd say something like hey i'm going to make you one of the best coffees in your life uh, but it's going to take 15 minutes to make so I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to tell you a bit about the coffee and you're going to tell me a bit about yourself. I, you know, I would tell the story of the coffee. I would say, okay, this is a coffee from Panama. This is what's special about that area. Here's what happened to, uh, here's what happened in that region or, or ge geography to make the coffee taste better um, or taste the way that it does. And here's what the roaster did, which are all very normal things that you do in specialty coffee, uh, kind of respecting the journey of the coffee. But what I found was that after two to three minutes, I would run out of things to say. And so I learned to draw stories out of the customer. And that meant asking the right questions and listening to what they had to say. And, you know, we never called our coffee bar there, you know, our, our studio. We never called it a cafe. And the reason why was because I really saw coffee as an art. Uh, what do I mean? In Honeycomb, we actually worked with a lot of public art. And one of the things that I always say to, you know, to clients, to, uh, to the cities, to the places that we're going to be installing the artwork, what I usually say is that, you know, public art, it, the artist always has an intention, right? So there's something, usually a message that the artist wants to say, wants to convey. However, by leaving it in public, People interact with it on an ongoing basis and maybe the artist isn't there to explain or ideally the art doesn't need any explanation and what happens is that people come up with their own interpretations and their own thoughts about the art and 
how it makes them feel, what they think it means. And what I found is that that's true for coffee as well, if we treat coffee as an art, which is that there is a true story about the coffee, but when it comes into contact with different people, it means something new to those people. And with all public art, it, what makes it special is the viewer. Like the artist always has something to say and of course the technical capabilities of the artists are always taken into consideration when you're dealing with art. But great art grows in meaning over time because as people experience it and they have different experiences with it and different interpretations of it, um, the meaning just gets bigger because it means more things to more people. And what I found was that in serving the same coffee to many customers and having the time or being forced to have the time, you know, while I'm grinding the coffee in the Porlex or I'm boiling the water on the induction cooker, was that I had to listen to them and hear about their journeys on their way to that cup of coffee. And what I found was that their journey and the coffee journey were equally important. And us finding ourselves in that moment, usually at night, 10 p.m., 2 a.m., having that cup of coffee together was just a crossroads. Neither one was more important. Neither one was more special. And I've seen it happen very many times in my own career, uh, in my own journey with coffee, where I see that, you know, the science will take over, the technicalities will, will take over. Kendo really was a reframing for me. You know, we started with 10, 15 minutes of making the coffee, but we ended up talking to some of them until the wee hours of the morning. Three, four hours, it would just start with a cup of coffee. And it makes coffee even more special because it becomes the meeting point. It becomes the intersection of our lives. The coffee has come from Ethiopia or Panama or Brazil and moved its way all the way across the world. But the customer has also come from wherever, different places, and they've moved their ways all across the world, and they found themselves at this one place, having this one cup. And I think that's special. And I think that that's art. It's strange because a lot of the focus that we have um, for art and coffee, it's usually experiential um, in, you know, in the pour over process, or it's uh, it's visual with latte art, um, but this is a very interesting insight for me at least, um, that it's almost like a performance art where the value of the coffee increases because of the customer, right? Because we as servers put value on the people who drink it um, in the same way that we've put value on the journey of the coffee and what it's been through and the beauty of it inside of our mouths. Maybe it, we can add to its beauty through our ears. So that's about it. Um, let, uh, let me know, let us know what you think of content like this. If you'd like to hear more philosophy and thoughts, um, this is of course about our experience, but we'd like to hear more about your experiences as well, um, whether as professional professionals in the industry or home baristas or um, even as customers, what it's like to be served. Where have you experienced the best service or the best discussion you've ever had with a barista? Uh, do let us know in the comments below. And please do subscribe and like this video if you do actually like it. Even if you don't like it, please comment and say why you don't like it or why we should stop doing it. Honestly, we just want to hear back from you, whatever you have to say, because that interaction increases the value of what we do. It's just like making coffee. All right, thank you very much. See you soon.